All right, cool beans. We're um, hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more great Ace Attorney adventures. It's time for some investigating. I hope the investigation isn't long. Also, I hope the power doesn't go out. Because yesterday, unexpectedly, my entire neighborhood, like a couple, couple of blocks around me, our power just went out. And they didn't even give an explanation of what happened. But, eh. I hope it doesn't happen tonight. The unexpected halt of proceedings sent a clamor around the courtroom. But outside the bailey where Londoners knew nothing of the secret trial within, it was a typical still night. Then, at a little past 8 o'clock that evening, Mr. Sholmes and his partner returned to Baker Street. <gasps> There's a feast! We have returned, my dear fellows. Welcome back to Britain, and thank you for your timely help. Think nothing of it. I believe you've had an even more wearing day than Mikotoba and I, no? You could say that. We were on the brink of defeat in court earlier. Then this prosecutor, Asugi, had you on the ropes, did he? And he's your best friend, you say? Well... He's not really the man I knew in Japan anymore. Kazuma's changed. Oh, Mr. Naruhodo. I mean, it's incredible. To think that he'd even entertain the idea of acting as the Reaper's assassin. Well, nevertheless, you must introduce me. After all, I've only ever met the young man as a corpse. <laughs> when all this started almost a year ago now. Mr. Sholm still hasn't told us the truth about what really happened back then. About the motivation for what he himself described as a great detective's lie. Now then, I must say, it's really quite a journey all the way to France. Well, it is another country, Mr. Sholmes. So, what news of Judge Jigoku? We took him to Scotland Yard. The investigating detectives there have, have a lot of questions for the man. Poor Professor Mikotoba. This must be quite a shock for him. Ah, oh, yes. I picked this up at the telegraph office on our way home. What is it? Surely you haven't forgotten already. I put upon you for the matter only yesterday. You put upon me, Sholmes. I had to fill out your telegram to Japan and foot the bill as well. Oh, you've had a reply already? What was so urgent though, Mr. Sholmes? Such matters can wait until later. I'm far too hungry for an involved conversation at present. Then why'd you bring it up? <laughs> That's good news, because supper is ready, everyone. Ah, and what a feast it is. If I am none the wiser, I think the trial would won already. I have to lower my mic a bit because I saw it peeking. There we go. Hope that's fine. Roast beef, kippers, stew, steak, and kidney pie. Yorkshire pudding. Tomorrow could be a very long day, so eat up! In that case, I think I'll seat myself just here. This place appears to be the only one set with a helping of pheasant as well. Oh, sorry, Hurley. Not there. Hmm? Why the not? Are we in set places this evening? Yes, and that place is for Susie's daddy. For me? That's right. I made it especially for you, Professor Mickey. I see. Well, that's terribly kind of you. It's... a shame, really. What do you mean? Well, for a brief moment, I believed it. Susie and I were half-sisters, I mean. Oh! Iris, do, do you mean... Does she know that... Wait. Yes, I know now. I overheard yesterday. I secretly listened to end on the conversation you had after I tricked you all into thinking I'd left. What? What? So she knows that... Wait, the misunderstanding arose because of that autopsy report from 10 years ago. But actually, it turned out that neither Dr. Wilson nor Professor Mikotoba are Iris' father. Yeah. She has green eyes. <laughs> yes, about that, Iris. You know, I... I know. You can't tell me at the moment. Oh, Iris. The pheasant is by way of an apology. I'm sorry for eavesdropping. Oh, no, no, that's quite alright. Then why don't I get any apologetic pheasant? 
So just who is Iris' father? I suppose that's not something we'll be finding out today. Will we ever find out? So then, let us dine, while our largely pheasantless plates are still piping hot. A fine idea, Sholmes. It all looks absolutely delicious. Eat as much as you like. There's always seconds. This could be our last chance to ask questions before tomorrow's trial. About that telegram from Japan, and about Kazuma. I can't let this opportunity slip away. <laughs> He's curled up on the couch. Hi. Um, Mr. Sholmes, what are you doing? <laughs> Surely it's abundantly clear. That I wasn't brooding over Mikotoba's refusal to share his pheasant with me. Nevertheless, I felt the need to withdraw from the social circle for a while and look on with hungry eyes. Ah. Uh... Sorry, Hurley, but I cooked that pheasant especially for Susie's daddy. Even though I've played the role of father to you for far longer. Um, Mr. Sholmes... Can I discuss some things with you? No. <laughs> Certainly, my dear fellow. I find myself quite in the mood for a spell of conversation. No doubt. You're hungry to learn more of my deep love of game. <laughs> I can probably contain my curiosity on that one. You needn't look at me in that fashion. In what fashion? It seems that before we discuss the pheasant, we have some rather unpheasant matters to discuss. Ha ha ha. Okay, now I can converse. The telegram from Japan. So, what was in the telegram you received back from Japan then? Ah, this. I think my lucky stars had arrived in time. Record found as indicated. Duplicate follows. K. Asogi, A. Shin, T. Gregson, J. Wilson. Kazuma... Asashin, Tobias Gregson, John Wilson. What? Those four names. We've come across that exact same list before. It came up in that unforgettable case last spring. They did? <laughs> what appeared to be a simple case of aggravated murder turned out to be a masking of monumental intrigue. A plot that involved the sale of British governmental secrets to foreign states. In exposing the means by which those secrets were being leaked, we deciphered a fragment of a message. Oh yeah! It was then. Okay, I totally forgot about it. K. Asugi, A. Shin, T. Gregson, J. Wilson. But we didn't find the names out until the case was over, and we never did get to the bottom of what they meant. All we knew was that the information had been sent by somebody in, in the British government to somebody in Japan. So, why are the names coming up again now? Yes! Where did the sender of your telegram discover them, Mr. Sholmes? I have here the message I had wired yesterday. Allow me to read it to you. Enter Judge Jukuku's of office undetected and investigate telegram records. Expect to find communication from Britain dated one year ago. List of four names. Need by tomorrow. Nadohodo. I sent it to a detective I know who specializes in clandestine missions of this nature. You asked Inspector Hosunaga to undertake such an onerous task for you? And in my name? I wonder what guys he opted for this time. My dear fellows, it was a matter of great urgency, you understand. Anyway, the list of names was found in Seishudo's office, as Sholmes predicted. Why would Judge Jukoku need the list? So you mean, that mysterious collection of names that was sent from Britain to Japan was... was sent to Judge Jukoku. He was the intended recipient. I don't believe it. But that doesn't answer the question of what the list of names actually signifies. I did formulate a hypothesis about that. But without a shred of evidence, I couldn't possibly have shared it. Mr. Sholmes looks deadly serious for once. The telegram from Japan has been entered into the court record. Uh... Duplicate follows. I mean, Asashin was definitely a killer. Asogi, Kazuma went as a separate. But why would they have the names from last year then? It wouldn't make sense. And then T. Gregson, obviously, investigating um, all the Reapers, whatever, whatever. And John Wilson was the coroner for. Um, professor case 
Hey, Smooth, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy... What day is it today? I must say Wednesday? Happy Wednesday. How have you been, dude? Kazuma's death. That tragedy we had to go through on the SS Burya. It was all for nothing. Kazuma wasn't dead at all. We were completely taken in by the lie you told us. Your great detective's lie. I took no pleasure in deceiving you. However, at the time... All that concerned me was preventing the young man's study tour from taking place, whatever the cost. What? I capitalized on the events that transpired to see that he was sent back to Japan. His remains, you mean? Precisely, Mr. Soto. And then, I made sure that somebody else was sent to Britain in his stead. Oh my, you mean... The arrangement between our two countries was already in place. One university student lawyer and one judicial assistant to be accommodated on a study tour. In other words, by arranging for someone else to fill the place originally intended for Mr. Asogi. I would successfully prevent the man from arriving on our shores for several years at least. Wait, do, do you mean to say that... It was all in aid of stopping Kazuma from coming to Britain? That's why you... Think back, Mr. Nadhodo. Was there not somebody who quite casually urged you to continue on the voyage to England? The terms of the study tour were negotiated by the Department of Justice in both Great Britain and Japan. Aligned with Mr. Wasuki's unfortunate death, I'm afraid the study tour can no longer go ahead. I did, fellas. The majority of problems have an extremely simple solution, you know. All you require is one lawyer, and the study tour can continue, surely. But there's no one else with the necessary qualifications, Mr. Sholmes, in order to know the lawyer. Polish London still promises a good month of time. I'm going to opportunity, I would say, to find yourselves another suitable lawyer. You're in pain? How am I? I am so wiped out from working out. Like, Monday I worked out. And it was longer and harder than I normally do. Because I wanted to finish all of my reps. Um, and I was just... My limbs just felt so weak. And then t I skipped yesterday. Because I was lazy. And then I worked out again today, but it was just so hard doing even 10 minutes. But I was like, no, let's try to get to 20 minutes as best I can. And now my body is so tired. So, you manipulated me? I've often remarked on the extraordinary lengths to which friendship will drive a man. I was quite sure that you would rise to the challenge for your late friends. I don't believe it. But if it was all contrived... I mean, what happened was treated by the authorities as murder. A woman was mistakenly arrested as the perpetrator. What do you suppose became of her? Naturally, I didn't allow the misapprehension to have any serious repercussions. I subsequently explained everything and assisted the unfortunate soul in finding the foreign refuge she sought. I seem to remember Miss Susato and I had some rather strong words for her. Well, she was certainly not devoid of all guilt. She deserved every word, I'm sure. I wonder if she made it to America, then. I'm afraid I simply cannot comp comprehend it. Why would you go to such lengths, Mr. Sholmes? Why are we so determined to stop Kazuma-sama from reaching Britain? The truth is, 12 months ago, there was already a very tangible omen of the impending tragedy, you see. Oh? An omen that, at this very moment in time, is close at hand. An omen of all these tragic events that already existed a year ago is close at hand? We need to find out exactly what Mr. Sholmes knows. What? Then why can't I converse with him more? There's no one on this side. Do I present him something? I don't converse. I can't move. Hmm? Do I present this? My armband? Would you mind looking at this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Strong toast, buff toast. I want to be buff. I want to be so strong. Um. The 
Du -du -du -du. Would present karma? Would you mind looking at this? No. The pheasant. Da -da 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 -da. Autopsy report, passport, trunk, Osaki papers, come over to photograph. Uh, our charge report. Ask Gregson's autopsy. Uh, photograph of Mr. Vigil, Redheaded League. I can't converse anymore. Sorry, I need to look at walkthrough. Oh no, I closed the walkthrough. Ah! <laughs> what do I do? What do I do? Do, 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 do. Okay, I have to present the telegram. Why? Mm. Uh. There was no room for doubt with your instructions in this telegram, Mr. Sholmes. You were very clear that it was Judge Chikoku's office that should be searched. So, you obviously knew that's where the list of names would be found. Hey, Asagi, Asian, T. Grex, and J. Wilson. But we only learned of those four names just over six months ago now. And only because they appeared as part of a top-secret government communications that were leaked. That's true, yes. But at the time, you were unaware of the backgrounds. You see, those four names were wired to Japan. Around six months before that, approximately this time last year, in fact, when you were both still in Japan. It really would be hypocrisy on my part to reprove others for intercepting state secrets. Because after all... I'm perpetually eavesdropping on communications between the British and Japanese governments. You're perpetually doing what? How? Never mind the details, but you should know. No secret is safe from Herlock Sholmes when he has designs on knowing it. Oh my, Mr. Sholmes, what a fabulous line! Now, one month after that list of four names was why to J the reci ah, recipient Jigoku in Japan. Dr. John H. Wilson was murdered. As soon as I learned of the incident, a hypothesis rapidly took shape in my mind. As it turned out, I was partly correct and partly mistaken. Nevertheless, it was the beginning of all the tragic events that were to follow. Mr. Sholmes, please, tell us all you know. Tell us about these four names and the tragedy to which they're all somehow connected. The Professor Case! Duh. The four names. As I said when I learned of Dr. Wilson's murder in Japan, my mind immediately turned to those four names because, you see, there was someone else on the list who I believed to be recently deceased. What? Who? A Shin, as it was transcribed in Japanese script. In actual fact, Miss Asashin. That was a familiar name to me. She was a professional killer, well known among London's unsavory classes. Oh, I see. But she had completely vanished from existence several months before Wilson's murder. So I came to the logical conclusion that she had herself been killed. And accordingly, I became fearful for the lives of the remaining two persons on the list. Ah, K. Asagi and T. Gregson. Is that why he was always hovering around Gregson? Owing to our proximity, I decided to take measures to protect Gregson myself. But I determined it would be best, it would be safest if young Asogi were to stay away from Britain. Ah, so that's why you went to such lengths to prevent his study tour from going ahead. But Wilson died in Japan, so he would have been in danger in Japan anyway, but okay. Exactly. So, you already knew who Kazuma-sama was, Mr. Sholmes. Oh yes, Sholmes and I have exchanged correspondence for years. I recounted many tales about Asuki to him in my letters, and the news of Dr. Wilson's death, of course. So, Dr. Wilson is dead then? I didn't know. Oh, Iris. I know he wasn't my daddy, but still, that's very sad. I'm so sorry, Iris. We knew the significance of the name, obviously, but... We just couldn't bring ourselves to tell you. No. But what you just told us, Mr. Sholmes, doesn't completely tie in with the facts. There's one big hole in your hypothesis. A big hole, Mr. Nadohodo? Ah, yes. You mean about Asashi and I presume? Oh, of course! Exactly. She wasn't killed, was she? She was in Japan, posing as a visiting student under the assumed name of Giselle Brett. I'm glad you're keeping up, my dear fellow. But I only became aware of that fact. 
Two days ago in the foyer of the Great Waterloo Hotel. Ah. And upon hearing that startling re revelation, the hypothesis that I formed surrounding those four names was completely turned topsy. What? Topsy? Topsy hypothesis. What do you mean when you say your hypothesis was turned topsy, Mr. Sholmes? I believed all four names on the list to be the names of victims. However, I was mistaken. Very much so. I said she was a killer. So this telegram is a list of both victims and killers, is it? Indeed, and it would seem that Miss Shin was dispatched from Britain with the sole intention of dispatching Dr. Wilson. Her visiting student status merely being a front. Ah. Which would of course explain why no motive could be determined for her actions. So the real reason Dr. Wilson was killed by Asashin is because he was the target of an assassination. And full armed with that knowledge, fresh consideration of this telegram puts the list in a very different perspective. What do you mean? Well, does it not strike you? There is another among the four who subsequently became a visiting student. Wait, you mean... But of course, a name you knew only too well. You mean... Kazuma? Oh! He did say in court earlier today. Yes, on 31st October, I accompanied Inspector Gregson to Dunkirk. In order to carry out a mission. And the mission was... The assassination of the mark. Young Mr. Asuki accepted that mission a year ago now. Surely not. In conclusion, this document is a contract of sorts. An international agreement, one might say, detailing an assassin, assassin exchange. An assassin exchange? How could Cosmo possibly have gotten involved in something like that? How did he? Wait. Clearly it's a list of... of... But if it's a list of killers... Assassin definitely is one. Gregson, I don't know if he actually killed... I mean, if he was inspecting all the Reaper cases and they happened to magically die, maybe he was the one first-hand killing them. I don't know who Dr. Wilson would have killed. And Kazuma didn't kill anyone that I know of yet. No, he said in um, court, he said he never killed anyone. Assassin exchange. Let's assume that we have two parties, each wishing to dispose of a distinct individual. Those two parties then make a contract to swap their respective assassination targets. That would then be an assassin exchange. So to begin with, the British assassin is dispatched as a visiting student to Japan where she kills her target. And then the Japanese assassin is dispatched as a visiting student to Britain in order to eliminate his target. It certainly does sound like an exchange. But what on earth is the point? Exactly, what's the point? Don't forget, Naruhodo, that the British assassin has at least escaped conviction. Blah, 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 I can talk. Thanks to diplomatic immunity afforded by consular jurisdiction. Oh, yes. Such juris jurisdiction should be null and void under the terms of the new treaty between our two countries. But the fact that it was brought into place at just intervention at the very highest levels. The highest levels? These murders were two sides of the same coin, linked not by a common motive, but by contractual agreements. As such, they appeared utterly unrelated, yet in truth, the assassins were complicit in one singular devilish scheme. That this association, and the safeguard of diplomatic immunity, were, I believe, the motivation behind this plot. But wait a minute, Sholmes. If this hologram really is describing the exchange of assassins as you're suggesting, it would mean that the Japanese killer's target was never Seishiro Jigoku at all. It would mean Asugi's target was actually Inspector Gregson. What? Kazuma was here for Gregson? So Judge Jigoku wasn't actually the mark? Yes, that's exactly what it would mean. I hold myself personally responsible for failing to keep the inspector safe. Mr. Sholmes. I told him of my fears and implored him to seek a transfer to an overseas position. Obviously, with the young pickpocket in tow. Yes, Gina. 
Come to think of it, Inspector Gregson did mention that to us at the Great Exhibition. That he'd be transferring to, Par to the Paris police and taking Gina with him. But without informing me, he engaged in one last assignment, it seems. And sadly, it turned out to be his very last. This is too much to take in. Alright everyone, that's quite enough of all that serious talk for one day. Isn't it, Hurley? I mean, look at the time! Ah, quite right, Iris. We must conclude our preparations for tomorrow. What preparations? Well, I think I shall make my way back to my hotel room now. This has certainly been a night to remember. It is. A little bit sad, though. I mean, I like the idea of you being my daddy. Because then, Susie would have been my big sister. I'm sorry, Iris. <laughs> I know, Iris. I was thinking quite the same thing. Were you? But if somebody like me were would be worthy, I would be delighted to become your sister. What? Really? Oh yes, without a question. So, you'll teach me all the ways you know to throw Runo to the floor? Yes, yes, of course. It would be my pleasure. You didn't have to agree quite so readily. Oh, but wait a minute. If Susie's going to be my big sister... You could be my big brother if you want, Runo. Huh? I mean, yes, of course. If you'll have me, I'll gladly be your brother. Well done, Iris. We must always be mindful of feelings. I've raised you so well. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Because being sensitive is your strong suit, naturally. Right, I'm going to work extra hard for tomorrow now, because it's for my big brother and sister. Um, what is all this talk about preparing for tomorrow? Preparing what? You'll just have to wait and see. Oh. Good luck in court tomorrow. I'm expecting a sterling performance. I'll do my very best, of course. So the overnight break in the trial's proceedings became a crucial turning point, exposing new truths while posing new conundrums. That list of four names on the telegram in Judge Jikoku's office, and the extraordinary assassination plot in which my best friend had somehow become involved. I felt as though I had been plunged into an even greater darkness all of a sudden. But at the same time- ah! I skipped it! Uh, I felt sure I would see the light again soon because I was lucky enough to have the most wonderful family in the world standing steadfastly behind me. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, with her gadgets and throwing people. <laughs> oh, that was very short. I thought I would actually be, like, investigating stuff. Wait, 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 but... Okay, so that list of names was sent to Judge Jigoku one year ago. So Jigoku knew that Kazuma was going to kill someone, that he was being sent to kill someone, and that Asashin would be coming over to Japan to kill Wilson. But did he know that Asashin was Giselle Brett? But then did we screw every... I mean, we still got her a guilty verdict, but she wasn't... She wasn't prosecuted. I don't know. I don't know. Ugh, confusing. Before we begin today, I have a brief announcement. As with the closed trial ten years ago, some astonishing facts have come to light in these proceedings. The revelation that the well-known Reaper is actually an organization illegally executing its own brand of justice and the discovery that a respected yard inspector was at its heart until he himself perished in an assassination plot. Well, I say to all members of the judiciary here present on this occasion, that we will stop at nothing to uncover the whole truth behind these disturbing findings. Councils, you will undertake this trial with the resolve to pursue the truth to the bitter end. Resolve, yes, that's my intention. My lord, if I may inquire, the defendant may speak. On what grounds is Kazuma Asugi permitted to continue in his role as prosecutor? 
He has admitted to colluding with the victim in a plot to assassinate an innocent man. He shouldn't be enjoying the privilege of freedom, let alone be leading off the, pros the prosecution. I submitted a written petition to Lord Strongheart. Requesting that judgment of my transactions be delayed by one day. You did what? In today's proceedings, I intend to expose everything. So this is it, then. We're gonna be done now? Wow. I would like it if it was done now, but then it's gonna- I feel like it's gonna be super long. My whole life for the last 10 years has all been leading up to this one day. Kazuma. Whatever the outcome of this trial, I give my word that I will accept whatever punishment is deemed appropriate, however severe. No! <laughs> and I suggest you prepare yourself for the same, Reaper. Yes, and yo, Regal, what's up? Long time no see, I hope you've been well, dude. Kazuma is bristling with hostility today. I get the distinct impression we're heading into very dangerous territory. Is that really even Kazuma-sama standing before us? An ex as an extreme exception to normal practices, I have granted this prosecutor's request. The defense finds this acceptable, I presume. Yes, because I love Kazuma. Yes, my lord. In that case, in the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session again. We resume the closed hearing of Barak Van Zeeks. The defense is ready, my lord. The prosecution is more than ready. Very well then, this preamble has taken long enough. Prosecutor Asogi, begin. As you wish, my lord. The prosecution calls the first witness to the stand. Bring Seishiro Jigoku into the courtroom. At last then, we've reached the final battle. He's putting literally everything on the line now in order to get to the truth. Come on, Yunosuke. It's time for that steely resolve, because this is going to test it to the limit. Push it to the limit! Man, I, I can't do so many deep voices. My throat is gonna hurt. Witness, state your name and occupation for the court. <sighs> so it was you who issued this, was it? Your subpoena. I did what was necessary. Ha 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 ha! Well, look what the young man has become. Oh, that's how I'll do his voice. I didn't think I'd see the day when you take that tone with me, I must say. The witness will ensure his responses are pertinent to the questions asked. My name is Seishiro Jigoku, a Supreme Court judge from the Empire of Japan. Sixteen years ago, this man came to London as a visiting student. Six years later, he returned to Japan. As well as presiding over the Supreme Court, he is also currently Japan's Minister of Foreign Affairs. I am of course fully aware of Mr. Jigoku and his preeminent roles. I invited him personally to the International Forensic Science Symposium as a representative of his country. A hero, he also played a key role in the conclusion of the Anglo-Japanese Treaty of Friendship and Navigation. Ah! It was a great honor to be involved in the negotiations. I put my all into that treaty. Judge Jigoku, I must ask. Well, I never. Fancy the young murdering student turning up here of all places. They didn't murder anyone. What's after this? Um, Somnium Files Nirvana Initiative. You quitted me yourself, and now I'm a practicing defense lawyer. Yes, and a full of self-importance like your friend across the courtroom, I see. You came here to London by an invitation to the International Forensic Science Symposium. But then, without informing anyone of your plans, you took flight to France. Took flight? I'd have to object that turn of phrase. Then explain yourself. What exactly were the circumstances? Well, I was somewhat expecting this, and I'm sorry to say. I declined to comment. What? Leaving the country prematurely when I was invited a guest may be questionable etiquette. But my decision is unrelated to this case. I can't be bound to testify. Unrelated, you say? I appreciate that a respected police inspector has been killed, for which I offer my condolences. However, being an alien, I obviously never met the man, nor do I know the first thing about him. Telegram as evidence! You haven't even played 999 or Danganronpa. I mean, I played 999 years ago off stream. But Somnium Files Nirvana in Initiative is the direct sequel to Somnium Files, which I did play on stream, so. And I do have to get to Danganronpa, man. I really want to get to it, but 
Before I get to Danganronpa, I'm gonna finish uh, Dragon Quest XI and Persona 5 Strikers. You beat the whole trilogy at 999? Yeah! I love it! Uh, Zero uh, Virtue's Last Reward is the best one. Second one. As such, I'm in no position to testify. It's as simple as that. So you would run from all this? I beg your pardon? This case is far more far-reaching than the murder of Inspector Gregson. It has ties to another murder, a case that was tried in Japan almost a year ago now. A year ago in Japan? The murder of Dr. John H. Wilson, you mean? That's right. And you, Judge Shikoku, are at the heart of both cases. The defense has evidence to prove it. Excuse me. Well, Ryunosuke, I see from the look in your eyes... ...that you have resolved to carry th this through to the very end, too. Let's see your evidence, then. I still need to do the last game. <sighs> I don't want to say too much about it because I don't want to raise or lower your expectations, but... That's all I'll say. <laughs> Just that... <laughs> that response from me just now. Protect those muscles, don't overdo it. Trust me, recovery can take a while. Yeah. I think I'll just need to get more sleep. I think I've been sleeping pretty late uh, the last couple of days. This is a telegram detailing a communication sent between Britain and Japan approximately one year ago. The communication contained four names. K. Asogi, A. Shin, T. Gregson, and J. Wilson. Hold it! You, you little... Where did you get that? In Tokyo, from your office, Judge Jigoku. What? How on earth did you... What's this all about? Why is my name on that list? This list of four names follows a certain pattern. T. Gregson and J. Wilson are the names of victims. K. Asuki and A. Shin are the names of assassins. No. A year ago in Tokyo, Dr. John H. Wilson's life was taken in a western-style restaurant in the capital. The culprit was found to be a visiting student who went by the name of Giselle Brett. But her real name was Asashin, a professional killer sent on a mission to kill from Great Britain. A. Shin and her victim, J. Wilson. And the murder that just took place here in London was the counterpart to that crime. An assassin sent from Japan, also to a visiting student, Kazuma Asogi. Whose victim was the British police inspector Tobias Gregson. K. Asogi and T. Gregson. One assassin from each country to kill a target residing in the other. What exactly is the defense suggesting? These two cases of murder, one that took place in Britain and one in Japan, were masterminded by a pair of individuals from each country as a form of an assassin's exchange. And the telegram the defense has acquired is proof of this international contract to kill. What? What? No, I think they're all... It's not a list of assassins and victims. They're all the name of people who need to be taken out. That's what I think. The telegram was found in your office, Judge Jikoku. In other words, the mastermind of Japan was you. Judge Jikoku, what's this all about? And you, Kazuma, you lied. During yesterday's proceedings, you acknowledged that you'd accepted the assassination mission. But the mark wasn't Judge Jikoku at all. It was T. Gregson, Detective Inspector of Scotland Yard. As shown by the name on the killing contract. Very impressive, Dudosuke. But actually, I didn't lie. The name of the target I was ordered to kill never passed my lips yesterday. The idea that Seishiro Jigoku was the mark came entirely from you. Ah! You deliberately avoided saying a name? The defense claims these four names indicate some sort of international assassin exchange. I'm sure I speak for all present when I say the very idea seems utterly absurd. Well, Mr. Jigoku, what do you have to say for yourself? His silence only goes to prove his guilt. There's another very important... Wait, there's another very important point that this new development brings to light. There's now a distinct possibility that the scene of Inspector Gregson's actual murder was in the witness's cabin aboard the SS Grouse. Hmm. 
Judge Jikoku, you have to testify now. To refuse to would put you in contempt of court. Ha 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 ha! There's no need for quite such a vicious stare, young man. Very well then. As a parting gift to you all, I'll tell you everything I know. It seems this Japanese gentleman has information that the court must hear. At the alleged assassin exchange and the events of the night of 31st October. Present your formal testimony now. That was the worst British accent ever. As you wish, my lord. The Assassin Exchange. It's true that Cosmo Asuki was assigned to the assassination mission one year ago now. The target was Inspector T. Gregson. There was a condition on the British study tour. That was a condition. However, in the end, something happened that meant the young man was unable to carry out his mission. On the evening in question, a member of the crew was on duty outside my cabin at all times. If there had been a shot fired, the crewman would have heard it, so clearly I can't be evolved. What do you mean you can't be involved? <laughs> you could have shot the dude! So you admit it then, as this communication suggests, there really was an assassin exchange arrangement between Britain and Japan. A political endeavor at the highest levels, not something I can discuss here. To use such a worthy practice as a foreign study to coerce somebody to, com to commit murder. It's the most appalling thing I've ever heard. Appalling? Well, it's easy to judge. Pardon? Asugi had a reason for taking his sword to that British inspector, you know. What? Which is why he accepted the mission in the first place. Isn't that right, Council? Kazuma-sama? Judge Jikoku, if you are the mastermind behind this operation in Japan, then tell the court the identity of your counterpart in Britain. Strongheart! I'm not obliged to divulge that information. As I said yesterday, I've killed nobody. I freely admit that I accepted the mission, but on the night the plan was to be executed, I backed out. In short, this assassin exchange that the defense has identified is unrelated to the events of this case. Everything is confusing me now, like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, the assassin exchange is, does seem unrelated to this case. But what? What? I'm so confused. The crucial point is this. Your police inspector can't have perished aboard that steamship in Dunkirk. Because if he'd been shot in the cabin, it's inconceivable that a member of the crew wouldn't have heard it. There was a cloth in the freaking horn tube thing. That's right. Rexon was killed after returning to London, in the room on Fresno Street. And, and he's like, oh, there's someone on guard outside of my door. Uh, yeah, except for when there's crew drills, where there's 20 minutes that no one's there. Ah, uh, and the perpetrator of the crime was the Reaper, Barak Van Zeeks. The prosecution's accusation remains unchanged. To think that a seemingly innocent foreign exchange program was a facade for such Machiavellian dealings. Clearly it's a plot only a government minister and a high-ranking judge such as a witness could hope to ex execute. Well, I seem to recall that it was someone on the British side who controlled everything. Be that as it may, it is not the place of this court to pursue this villainous assassin exchange plot. Because you're the mastermind behind it and you don't want us to find you out, you douche nozzle. We are concerned only with the tangible events pertaining to the murder of Inspector Gregson. Is the defense clear on that point, counsel? It's so easy to, to prove that Jigoku was Gregson's killer. It's like, wow. I must say ha there have been no games coming out. I I think that's better though. I feel like it's more worth it to take time making polished games than just releasing something. Everyone complains you have to quickly release a patch to fix all the bugs and stuff. It's like make good solid stories, please. Then I will play the game. But um Pokémon's coming out later this year in November. Cosmosuki, but uh, target was Inspector Grip, but uh, however, it is, well, can carry this mission. On the evening question, member of the crew was on duty on a sound my cabin of there may a shot fired. I clearly I can't be involved. Uh, let me save first. No thanks, I'm done with Pokemon forever. 
I mean, I, I can see that. Like, the later games, like... The quality of life stuff, like the way you manage eggs and, like, tra Pokemon transportation has gotten better, but the story has just been like, eh, the new Pokemon, eh, the gym battles, eh, even, like, getting through the gyms, it just got too easy, and I'm just like, oh, man, it's kind of sad. Pokemon, Pokemans! Sun Moon was the last draw. Okay, Sun Moon, I'm sorry, was garbage. I'm so upset with Sun Moon. I was just like, what is this? So I feel like the only reason why I thought it was like remotely fun was because when Sun Moon came out, I was playing with a lot of coworkers and we kept trading back and forth to complete our Pokedexes and like going with each other for um, Gigantamax raids. But if I didn't have them, I would have ditched Sun Moon way earlier. Not only is the story garbage, the gameplay has gotten easy, the graphics are garbage, they hold your hand in every game. Yeah, that's something I'm really sad about. Too handholdy, can't skip cutscenes. Mm -hmm. Yes, as the court has heard, there was a crewman posted outside Judge Chikoku's cabin. However, we can be sure that, contrary to the witness's claim, the guard wasn't there at all times. What? I have here a notice of a particular event that was scheduled to take place aboard the steamship on the 31st. What? Where did you get that? From the steamship. It's evidence gathered by Mr. Herlock Sholmes. You were acquainted yesterday, if you remember. Herlock Sholmes again. According to this itinerary, after leaving the port of Durnkirk at exactly 10 p.m. and for a period of 20 minutes, all crewmen of the SS Grouse were to gather on deck for an evacuation drill. All crewmen were away from their posts? And during that 20 minute interval, of course, any gunshots emanating from your cabin would have been heard by no one. In summary, Judge Shikoku, you had ample opportunity to commit the crime. Arr! I just spent every game mashing A. Boring story, easy gameplay, why play it all? Because it's Pokemon and you just buy all Pokemon games. Nah, I, I see your point. I get it. But, yeah, so I don't know if I'm even going to get um Pokemon Scarlet Violet on release day. They're like, oh, if you pre-order the game, you get the the bejeweled Pikachu, and I'm like, can't you get bejeweled Pikachu anyway? Uh -uh. A 20-minute window of opportunity. That's an excellent find, Junosuke. But it amounts to nothing! Why? Because the witness clearly stated in his testimony that no incident occurred in this cabin. He is lying! On the SCS, have some decisive evidence that can show his testimony to be false. Your accusation is nothing more than conjecture. Very true, well, counsel. Inspector Gregson was killed in Judge Shikoku's cabin that night. I'm certain of it. Because the defense has evidence to prove it. Who gets Pokemon for story? That's true, but like, I feel like older Pokemon games, like um, Red, Blue, Yellow, Silver, like, it was a challenge to traverse the... the roots and like even fighting um trainers in gyms it was pretty not pretty hard but it was still challenging but i feel like these days it's just like way too easy it's like two trainers here's the boss like oh that's it mm. you'll present your evidence for the defense at once counsel what proof do you have that the victim's life was taken in Jigoku's cabin on the 31st October? Uh, this. <laughs> Judge Jigoku, this was found in your cabin yesterday. What is that? The crown of a pocket watch. Uh, a pocket watch? And if you will observe, the victim's pocket watch, which we know he treasured, is missing at precisely that part. It, it can't be. Moreover, this crown is a perfect fit on the spindle protruding from the victim's watch. Now, the fact that this was retrieved from Judge Jikoku's cabin tells us that the victim's watch almost certainly broke there. Urgh. In other words, the victim was killed on the 31st during the 20-minute evacuation drill. In the cabin occupied by you, Judge Jikoku. Well, you're a razor sharp, aren't you, you young murderer? I didn't murder anyone, but you did. 
Expertly maneuvered. That's how you spell maneuvered? Maneuvered. <laughs> you know, scare. And your argument sounds entirely plausible. At first. Kazuma, what are you doing? I rather like this pocket watch. It's full of cracks. What do you mean it's full of cracks? What? And I believe Judge Chikoku feels the same way. I was wrong to acquit you earlier in the year. Sorry? If I had known that it would result in anyone having to listen to this drivel, I would have declared you guilty just to spare the world your ridiculous bombast. It's because you know I got you! Ah. I think it's clear that the witness will have to give further testimony. When you hear what actually happened in my cabin that night, you'll notice the pitfall into which you stumbled. Shut up, you killed him! Prior to your renewed testimony, I would like to clarify one point. The fact that this part of the victim's watch was discovered in your cabin means that you acknowledge he was there, I presume. Yes, I do. Very well then. You may proceed to give your formal testimony about what exactly happened in your cabin aboard the ship on the evening of the 31st October. Of course, as a man of the law, I have no intention of obstructing justice. Lies and falsehoods. Events of the cabin. I had a guest waiting for me when I returned to my cabin after finishing my evening meal in the dining room. When I walked through the door, a mustachioed Englishman was there foolishly waving a gun at me. I soon took care of him with an eponce throw, though. He couldn't wait to run away after that. I imagined his watch was broken when I threw him over my shoulder. It has nothing to do with his murder. The inspector was clearly killed having returned to Britain because his body was found in London. Oh, that's tricky. Eponce... A common jujutsu martial arts technique in my country. Jujutsu Kaisen! I was careful not to use too much force, but the man obviously landed too heavily for his watch to take. So, do you know Skenadohodo? I imagine you can see the flaw in your logic now, can't you? Why are you per trying to protect him, Kazuma? What? What? The fact that the pocket watch is broken in the witness's cabin in no way proves that the victim's murder took place there. Ah! I have, no, uh, uh, I have no doubt the inspector intended to kill me, but he didn't manage to pull the trigger. LIES BECAUSE THERE WAS A GUNSHOT HOLE IN THE WALL! Yes, because he was merely the tactician, not the Reaper's Hand of Death. Well, the testimony appears to make perfect sense as far as I can tell. Let me express my deep gratitude for your understanding, my lord. But if this testimony holds, Judge Jikoku will be deemed to have no involvement in the case. Well, Counsel, I really see no reason for wasting precious court time here on a cross-examination. Sorry, my lord, the defense has a right to cross-examine, and I don't intend to squander that. You're an embarrassment to your countrymen. Not knowing when you're beaten! Gah! I will <laughs> bash my knee in your face. In that case, proceed, Mr. Nadohodo. Yo, I was silent because... What you said is so ridiculous is not worth replying to. Yep, yep. I had a guest waiting for me when I returned to my cabin. When I walked in the door, a mustache with Ingus was there foolishly waving a gun at me. Soon to care of him with an evil say throw, though he couldn't wait to run away after that. I imagine his watch was broken when I threw him over my shoulder. It has nothing to do with his murder. The inspector was clearly killed having returned to Britain because his body was found in London. Now what evidence do I have? Evacuation drill, his sword, charm, cleanse off. Damn it, damn it, damn it! It's just like... We clearly know something went down because in the first part of this case, we were in the ship. We saw the bullet hole. We saw the clogged up tube horn thing. But now how do we prove everything? We don't have anything here. Uh... Having wound it up, it started ticking again, and it ran out. So he wound it up on the night of the 31st, and then it broke. Or when he died. I'm gonna say he died, because he died on the ship. And, and yeah, his body was kept intact because they could make ice on that ship. They could just shove his body in the cooler. And if he's like, oh, like, someone would have seen me do it. Yeah, you paid the guy off to... to uh, but how do I prove it? How do I prove it? 
Ah! I'm so close I can taste it, but I don't know how to get there. Frag! Do I just have to press? Do I just have to press? Imagine what I'm gonna press this. The crown snapped off and the glass covering the face of the watch was cracked. Preferably preferable to the man's head being pulled off his pulled off or his spine cracking, wouldn't you say? Not that a man was spared for long. A bullet to the chest soon saw to that. But the point is, the broken pocket watch doesn't prove that a murder took place. Absolutely not. All the watch proves is the power of my jujutsu throw. Whatever you say, it doesn't quite ring true that no shot was fired in that cabin. Because there was an obvious bullet hole in the wall. Ha 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 ha. What are you talking about? Hmm? That's the star of your lowbrow detective stories told you, is it? Well, I don't care for such fiction. Haven't you worked it out yet, you little stripling? No murder took place in my cabin. What's this one? But there's no evidence that proves the victim ever returned to London alive. Just take a moment to think that idea of yours through now, stripling. What? If the inspector was killed on a steamship in France, how on earth could he have got back to Britain? Um, when people die, their bodies remain at that same spot. It's a devil of a thing. Well, then, obviously the culprit must have moved the body. How exactly? Carrying a corpse off a ship in your arms would raise a few eyebrows at least, don't you think? Well, yes, that's true, but... No, I still believe Jigoku killed him. All passenger luggage is inspected when it is unloaded from arriving vessels. And I would like to think the border police would query the corpse of an English gentleman as hand luggage. If the murder had taken place aboard the ship, you would imagine the body would have been disposed of at sea. There would be no sense in risking being caught by attempting to transport the body back to Britain. Ugh, that's killed that idea then. But perhaps not. Mr. Sato? We've heard that the first class passengers were under constant scrutiny by the crewmen posted to guard them. Which would mean that the culprit had no opportunity to dispose of the body in the sea. Unless they did it in the 20 minute time window, but you know, whatever. Yes, that's true. So transporting the body to Britain may have been the only viable alternative. Dear me, you really are new to this, aren't you? I thought I'd been perfectly clear, but it seems I'm going to have to explain it in words you can understand. I think I ought to alter my testimony with your consent, of course, my lord. I have no objection. State your amended testimony now. There's no possible way I could have transported the victim's corpse back to Britain. Hmm, there's an idea. Think about it, stripling. All passengers and crew disembarked at the same time and passed through the same checks at the border. The symposium guests were then driven straight to the hotel and carriages organized by the Ministry. And we met you as soon as you arrived at the hotel. So you did! Well then, remind me, did I have a corpse over my shoulder at the time? What? No. So we're in agreement then. I couldn't possibly have brought the inspector's body back to Britain. Unless, of course, they developed some clever device these days to instantly move things from A to B. Funny you should say that. Professor Hairbrain's invention didn't actually work, if you remember, Mr. Narahodo. Yes, of course. The defense has become unusually quiet, I notice. Yes, because there's really nothing more to say. So that's a story. Well, I suppose if you think about it, whenever you drop a teacup in the office and it breaks, we don't say, Mr. Nato must have been murdered there, do we? Is that a veiled threat about what might happen to me if I break another one? And the fact is that Inspector Gregson's body was found in the little room on Fresno Street. If he really was killed in Judge Chikoku's cabin, the body would have had to have been moved somehow, obviously. Transporting a dead body over a country border, that would be impossible for the majority of people. But it must have been some special circumstances that made it possible for the culprit then. That could be a vital realization, I think, Mr. Narahodo. Yeah, just be like, yo, I'm here for the symposium. I brought some stuff for it. Don't check my box, though. Okay, you know what? Let's just press every statement. Because the so-called guard posted at your cabin door had just let your killer pass, you mean. Apparently, Gregson told the crewman he was a police inspector, which was the truth, of course. He wouldn't have had his identification with him, though. He had his trench coat and mustache, not to mention a bag of chips. I imagine the crewman was convinced. But the man accompanying him in would have had to have two swords flung around his waist. You mean me? Who else? Yes, that's true. You would have had hope to... Sight of a few swords might have set off alarm bells in the guard's head. The point is, I left the cabin before its occupant returned and I immediately disembarked the ship. 
Certainly. All I can tell you is that the only only the inspector was waiting for me when I arrived back at my cabin. And you entered without any inkling of suspicion. That's right. None whatsoever. Ah, no, sorry. Uh, Obviously, you're talking about Inspector Gregson. Yes, though at the time, I didn't know the man's name. And there was no time for introductions. I value my life over manners. By which you mean that the inspector was there to assassinate you, I suppose. That was certainly the impression given by the gun pointing in my direction. But I've never seen the muzzle of a revolver shake about so much in all my life. Anyone would think the man had never shot somebody before. Believe it or not, most of us haven't. Anyway, there was no time to call for help of the crewman at the door, so I dealt with the man myself. <laughs> See, it doesn't make sense. He definitely had to kill him, because when we were in the boat, he was clearly hiding from us. So he's clearly guilty of something. Ah! Even though the man had a gun, that was a very brave move, wasn't it? Ha 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 ha. My Yiponse is faster than a bullet, I can assure you. But surely all that commotion caused the crewman to come in, didn't it? Hmm? Yes, of course. He burst in immediately without knocking. The inspector hurled himself at the stocky fellow and just managed to slip past him to make his escape. The outstanding guard does it again. Luckily, there aren't many situations I can't get out of using a quick Yiponse throw. Okay, I pressed everything. No possible way I could have transported... <sighs> I'm going from the turn from evacuation drill. This. Okay. So he had to take his traveling place because his passport was in here. And his blood is on it. Nintendo feels like people get Pokemon for the story because you can't skip cutscenes, game plans, and change in dirty years, and they make it dirt easy. Yeah, it's it's just way too easy now. Like, when you pick moves now, it even shows like, oh, this is super effective, or like, this is not effective. And I'm like, make the kids remember type weaknesses. Um, back Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh? Wait, what? <gasps> oh my! Oh my gosh! Okay, 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 okay. Um. Woo! There's no possible way you could have moved Inspector Gressing's body, you say? I would say the opposite is true. And what's that supposed to mean? Far from being impossible for you to do. The transporting of Inspector Gressing's body back to Britain is something only you could do. What are you talking about, Yudosuke? As well as being a judge, Mr. Jikoku is also Japan's Minister of Foreign Affairs. Which means he's exempt from having his luggage searched when he enters the country. Hmm. We learned that when we first met you upon your arrival in London. I don't remember that conversation, I cheated. Red rum. <laughs> but all those passport checks and luggage searches at the border took rather a lot of time. I must say I'm very envious of your ministerial status. You didn't have to go through any of that, did you? Ah, I knew you were jealous, ha ha ha. And there's Gregson's body! I presume you recall this, Judge Shikoku. It's a photograph we took in the foyer in the foyer of the hotel to mark the occasion. As the court will note, you have with you your large travel trunk. Large enough, in fact, to have a corpse inside. Mr. Naruhodo, surely you're not suggesting. I'm afraid I am, yes. Three days ago, when we were chatting innocently with the new arrivals from Japan in this hotel, the body of Inspector Gregson was just meters away from us inside Judge Chikoku's trunk. But he was hiding in his trunk. Order in the court. Guten Tag, Guten Abend, Golden. How you doing? Thanks for joining. I'm skeptical, Counsel, that a grown man's body could fit inside even the largest travel trunk. It could. 
Because I happen to know, the witness himself, a man of considerable size, fits inside his trunk. And verifying that would be extremely simple, wouldn't it, Judge Chigoku? But, but inside his trunk? How horrifying! And after we'd spoken with you at the Great Waterloo Hotel, you had the opportunity to visit the apparent scene on Fresno Street. Taking your trunk with you in a cab to deposit the inspector's body. I don't have to listen to this nonsense. Dr. Gorey, the coroner who examined the body, has confirmed the possibility. She's acknowledged there are signs that steps may have been taken to disguise the true time of death. The onset of the body's decomposition decomp could have been delayed by storing it in a refrigerator. Counsel, as I remember explaining yesterday, refrigerators of the requisite size are few and far between. Yes, I'm sure they are, but one place they're certainly found on is large ocean liners. Such ships are equipped with electrically refrigerated cold rooms to keep the food fresh on their long sea voyages. And the SS Grass is no exception. Professor Mikotome told me about it only yesterday. Well, Judge Shikoku? However much you prolong this debate, you can't eliminate the truth. All the evidence points to you being the killer. Ha 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 ha. Well, this is all very heartening. How's been? Anything new? Um... Nothing much. Life is still chill, which is good. I don't like drama. How's your life been? I hit the beach over the weekend, first time since before COVID killed the world. Sadly, didn't meet any sharks. I mean, that's good because you don't really want sharks to come to the shore because people will freak out about them. I can see that it was wise move letting Asugi and you embark on the story tour. What are you talking about now? Logical reasoning, of course. All court proceedings will be built on logical reasoning in the new century. And I can see that you've both laid firm foundations for that already. Judge Chikoku, please, stop diverting attention from the issue at hand. The defense has made an accusation against you. How do you respond? Respond? There's really no need for me to respond, is there? Why ever not? Because before you can even begin to answer the question of when the victim was killed, you must first establish one key fact. Where was the victim killed? It's quite logical. The actual scene of the crime... The prosecution stance is unaltered. The killing took place on Fresno Street when the gunshot was heard. As the accused, Barrack Van Zeeks shot the victim at Point Blank Ridge! Kazuma, I'm so sorry. It's not Barrack. He did not kill anyone. You gotta let it go. There's no tangible evidence ev exists to disprove the prosecution's claim at this time. The defense's deductions amount to little more than an elaborate failure tale. I'm afraid that's how logical reasoning the British are known for. Really works, young stripling. The victim was shot in that little room on Fresno Street and died instantly. I'm afraid it's the prosecution's claim that's the only fairy tale here. How can you say that? Quite simply. Because that claim directly contradicts a certain piece of evidence in our possession. Very tantalizing, counsel. I think you had better explain yourself to the court, don't you? The prosecution claims that Inspector Gregson died instantly when he was shot at the scene on Fresno Street. But this evidence clearly contradicts that claim. Ah. Seen for a plan of how to projections for the world. Candle, room, police figure, revolt. I'm going to cheat. It is. Okay. Well, I was I was just guessing, and then that's why I examined it. It's the photograph of the victim. But why? The photograph of the victim in the very location claim he wasn't killed? Yes, but the point is the posture of the body itself. If Inspector Gregson had been shot there in that room, it's out of the question that his body would have been curled up in a ball like that. 
If he died instantly and he was shot when he walked in, he would have just slumped over, but he's curled up in a ball. Because he had to be shoved in a trunk! I'm sorry to disappoint you, but your logic is flawed. He could easily have adopted that fetal position due to the pain of the shot, which subsequently proved fatal. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Judge Jikoku, but it's your logic that is flawed. What? According to this autopsy report, the victim died instantly. He would have felt no pain, much less have been able to draw himself into that position. Ah. Which begs the question of why the victim's body is curled up in that way. Though the answer should be abundantly clear by now. You're... you're suggesting. The inspector's body took on that posture ahead of its arrival on Fresno Street, before it was coldly turned out on the floor from the inside of a large travel trunk. No. You're quite right. The shape of the body. It looks exactly as if it had been kept in a confined space. Judge Jikoku, present your trunk for examination. I believe it's very possible that it will contain traces of the victim's blood. Ah! Present my trunk? I refuse! What? On what grounds? I'm the Minister of Foreign Affairs from the Empire of Japan. I shouldn't have to put up with this treatment just because of some stripling's baseless accusations. In other words, Judge Ikaku, there's blood in your trunk! What you gonna do with all that blood, all that blood inside your trunk? <laughs> I decline to answer that. As the Minister of Foreign Affairs- SHUT UP! <laughs> you killed him! At this moment, you're not a government minister. You are a witness in a trial in Britain's highest court. I don't care who you are or what your status outside this courtroom might be, but you will not withhold information. Nothing is more important than the truth. Ugh. Ugh. Order in the court. Well, Mr. Jikoku, what's it to be? You can't be serious. You did it? Have you no shame at all, Kazuma Asogi? What? Very well, I admit it. I did bring the inspector's body into the country. Inside my trunk, exactly as postulated by the defense. What? You... Dear God, outrageous! So it was you, you admit- No, I admit to nothing more than what I've said. Of killing the man, I certainly have no recollection. What on earth is that cryptic statement supposed to mean? I merely disposed of the inspector's body which was left in my cabin, in order to avoid unwanted attention. As the judicial assistant over there pointed out, I had no chance to throw it into the ocean. So I decided my only option was to bring it into Britain with me and dispose of it somewhere else. You still can't deny it. If you didn't do it, then who on earth did kill the man? As you know, there was one other person in my cabin that night. He had the opportunity. And moreover, he'd already accepted a mission to take the inspector's life. Oh. That's right. Who else could, could it have been? It was you, Kazuma Asogi. You're lying! Kazuma didn't kill anyone! You. I never thought you'd stoop to this, Seishiro Jigoku. You've taken the words straight out of my mouth, Prosecutor Kazuma Asogi. You thought by leaving the body in my cabin you could pin the crime on me, did you? Well, the prosecution counsel has already admitted to visiting the witness's cabin on the night in question. Yes, on an assassination mission, no less. You wouldn't. So, what do you make of that, young stripling? You've heard my testimony now, and all that that's all I have to say on the matter. I'll admit to nothing more. I don't believe this. Counsel for the defense. What is your position now? Blah 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 blah. The assertion on that night in question, the victim's assailant was in fact Mr. Kazuma Asogi. This isn't the dead end it seems to be. The answer's right in front of me. Right in front of me. And simple, really, very clear. It comes down to Jigoku or Kazuma. Both of them had the opportunity to kill Gregson, but only one of them did it. And I'm just a step away from proving who. Very well. The defense is ready to respond to the assertion put forward by Judge Jigoku. The idea that the victim's murder could have been committed by pros Prosecutor Asogi is... I mean, I'm biased and I'm gonna say it's not. That's not true. That's impossible. That's not true. That's impossible! 
search your feelings. You know it to be true. Yeah! It's impossible. Impossible. Judge Jikuku, let me remind you of something you said only a few minutes ago. You claim that logical reasoning is the future of the judi judicial process. It is, no question. Well, logical reasoning can prove something here. Namely, that it would have been impossible for Prosecutor Asugi to commit the crime. What? The court will only accept an argument that is supported by compelling evidence. So present what you have, counsel. What proof is there that allegedly demonstrates the impossibility of Prosecutor Asuki's involvement? Impossible! Sasuke! I mean, Kazuma didn't know that all the crew members left. <laughs> this itinerary for crew members of the SS Grouse, my lord. This is conclusive proof. An itinerary? How does that prove anything? Judge Jigoku, the moment you acknowledged that you found the victim's body in your cabin, this itinerary suddenly became much more significant. What? Why? On the night in question, as always, a crewman sentry was on guard outside your cabin door. And as long as he was there, nobody could have fired a shot inside the cabin. Absolutely, because it's inconceivable that the guard wouldn't have heard it and come to investigate. So that tells us that the crime must have taken place when the guard was elsewhere. And that narrows it down to the 20 minutes just after 10 o'clock, as in indicated on the itinerary. Yes, I see no flaw in your reasoning so far. But the crucial point is this, when the evacuation drill took place, the steamship had already put to sea from the port of Dunkirk. Ah. Now, clearly the murder could only have been committed by someone who was aboard the vessel at the time. But Prosecutor Asagi stated in yesterday's proceedings. I didn't come to Great Britain to take anyone's life. I left Grex and disembarked the ship. I spent that night at a boarding house in town and returned to England the following morning. Which I'm sure the court will agree is conclusive proof. That Kazuma Asuki couldn't possibly have carried out the killing. Yeah. No, absolutely not. I don't accept that at all. What do you mean? The boy is just saying that to exonerate himself. We can't trust that he really disembarked the vessel. Obviously, after he left my cabin, he hid himself somewhere nearby on the ship. Just waiting, waiting for a chance to. No, that's out of the question. Isn't it, Kazuma? As the defense rightly recalls, I disembarked the vessel and spent the night in a boarding house in Dunkirk. And as I said yesterday, I signed my name in the accommodations register book. All extremely easy to verify and undeniable proof. Ah, oh, no, I... There's no escape this time. You can forget that you're a judge or a government minister. It's time you gave the court an honest answer as a common man. You killed Inspector Tobias Grex and then transported his corpse back to Britain. Then you dumped the body in the broom on Fresno Street and made it look as if the murder had happened there. That's what really happened, isn't it? Seishiro Jigoku. It was that damned trial ten years ago. That's when all this began. Looking back now, my fate was decided that day. I was doomed already. Ah, oh, stop shaking, it's making me dizzy. Ah! Ah! Uh... It's over! My life is over. Oh. The game is over. It's not over. He's not the final bad. A British assassin to eliminate a professor in Japan. A Japanese assassin to as eliminate a detective in Britain. Both assassins will use diplomatic immunity to evade conviction and return safely to their homelands. The assassin exchange request arrived from Britain about one year ago. Though it was hardly a request, it was a demand. And for that, you've decided to recruit Mr. Asogi. 
But things didn't go according to plan. Your chosen assassin never made it to Britain. And you found yourself unable to dispatch a replacement. Because I was already on my way to Britain at that time in Cosmo's place. And that left me with only one option for carrying out my obligation. To eliminate the mark myself, personally. Of course, there was but a single opportunity for me to do that. The International Forensic Science Symposium, I presume. That's right. I decided it would be safest to carry out the plan before my arrival in Britain. So I enlisted the help of my British counterpart. And made arrangements for a pretext that would take the inspector to Dunkirk. To lure the man in, he was given a sham mission by the Reaper. What? The Reaper? But there's only one person who could have done that. The mastermind of the entire operation, the Reaper himself. Ah. So, that means that the assassin exchange was... It was all planned by the Reaper. I'm not at liberty- Ah, I skipped too fast. Uh, I'm not at liberty to say anything about my British counterpart. Just say it! Just say it and get it over with! Gah! Anyway, the inspector accepted the Reaper's mission and dutifully infiltrated my cabin on the steamship. But it was all a trap designed to lead him to France and to his own death. Oh, how awful. It was past 9 o'clock when I returned to my cabin from the dining hall that evening. I didn't give him the time to attack me. I choked him until he lost consciousness. But there was a guard just outside the door, so I left it at that for the time being. Even the slightest noise might have aroused suspicion, so I bided my time, waiting. For the 20 minutes after 10 o'clock. I had to, intended to finish him by strangulation, but moments before I had the chance, he suddenly came round and went for me in a reckless move. Dang! But if they get caught, are they really good assassins? No. As long as you kill your target, then yes. Oh yeah, I guess so. Eh. I received the British issue gun 16 years earlier, being a member of the judiciary as a visiting student. I never imagined I'd have to use it for something like that. So the revolver belongs to you, does it? And the victim was killed inside your cabin on the ass's grouse. Which begs the question of why you arranged for his body to be discovered in the room on Fresno Street. The young judicial assistant over there has already answered that question. There was no way I could take the body up on deck to throw it over the side. That's precisely where all the crewmen were gathered for the evacuation drill. But before the first class cabin sentries returned, I took the corpse to the refrigeration room. And then on arriving in Dover, you concealed the body in your trunk in order to smuggle it past border police. I knew I needed to take steps if the police were convinced when the body was found in London. In that case, you must have known. You must have had intimate details of Inspector Gregson's intended schedule. Yes, my British counterpart sent me everything I needed to know. The inspector was due at Fresno Street at 5 o'clock that afternoon, in order to meet a man by the name of Hugh Boone, from whom he would take back his police identification. Ah! I decided that man would be the perfect person to set up as his culprit, but I took a hackney carriage over there with the body still in my trunk. That must have been just after we took this photograph with you at the hotel then. Yes, I wasn't expecting a welcoming committee. I was more than a little nervous. On Fresno Street, I spotted a young girl selling little firecrackers. Miss Venus, of course. I conceived of that candle trick there and then. So I donned a simple disguise and approached the girl to buy enough firecrackers to replicate a gunshot. What sort of disguise? For some reason, the inspector had a bright red hairpiece in his own traveling case. I put that on, although I suspect I drew more attention to myself than I would have otherwise. The hairpiece we found at the scene. The inspector had it for the Red-Headed League investigation. I only arrived at the room around quarter to five, but I quickly placed the body on the floor, moved the notice board, and set up my little candle trick. I arranged it so the firecrackers would go off with a bang around 15 minutes later, so that Mr. Boone, who was due to arrive at five, would walk straight into a trap. Except, at the last moment, I made a careless blunder. What was that? I imagine. It was a bag of fish and chips. Ah! I didn't notice that it had fallen out of his overcoat pocket when I moved the body to the refrigeration room. I put it back into his pocket the following morning, but... Well, it seems the warmth of the heated cabin had accelerated the decay of the fish. Anyway, that's... That's everything. All the sort of details of what I did. There's a new enemy, the noisy ninja assassin. Definitely before health inspectors became a thing, nobody looked at a dead body in the freezer. 
Yeah, that's interesting that none of the crewmen would have seen the dead body in the freezer. But I guess at that time of night, everyone's like, everyone should be sleeping, so it's not like they're asking for ice or their drinks. I've heard enough. We've arrived at the truth about the murder of one of the country's most capable and respected police inspectors. The witness will be tried in the coming days. For a crime of such a vile nature, you can expect the most severe penalty. And he's gonna be like, you get the death penalty so that we get rid of one more person involved in the professor case because Strongheart is the mastermind. An exchange of assassins, what a foolhardy idea. Mr. Jigoku, one last detail. Who was your counterpart in Britain? Who was the mastermind behind the assassin exchange? Do it, just tell us! Nothing you can say now can make matters any worse for you. Just tell us. Enough! I've already told you that I cannot say. Even though as things stand, you may very well never set foot in your homeland again. What are you waiting for? Can't we get this over with now? It's finished. All of it. I'm finished. Then, in the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I now pronounce the findings of this court. This man before us has admitted to the willful murder of Tobias Gregson. Maybe he put the body in case and then in a freezer? No. Oh yeah, I guess so. Because, because if he just put it in the freezer, the body would have, like, it would have rigor mortis. So it would have been hard to put him in the case. But if he could put him in the case first, and then brought the whole case to the refrigeration room, no one would have noticed. Seishiro Jigoku, it is the opinion of this court that you should be found. Guilty. Confetti and fireworks. And may I remind all those present of the strict confidentiality demanded by this closed court. That can't be it. That can't be it. That can't be it. Strongheart! I gotta get you! Moments ago, Mr. Jigoku signed a written confession, admitting to the murder of Inspector Gregson and the subsequent conveyance of the body. In short, the defendant's innocence has therefore been established beyond doubt. Oh, wonderful. Well done, Mr. Nadahoro. Yes, um, thank you. Something wrong? I'm just a little troubled. By a silence. True identity... The true identity of the Reaper of the Bailey, and this extraordinary assassin exchange. We do remain in the dark about these mysteries. However, insofar as the indictment brought against the defendant in this trial, we have reached a conclusion. I have every intention of pursuing both mysteries. As a prosecutor. As you wish. Now, for the formal adjudication. I hereby declare the defendant. Bar Why? Kazuma? Kazuma? The prosecution calls for adjudication to be deferred. Counsel? The accused's innocence hasn't been fully established at all. What are you talking about? Uh, no more wacky lawyers. Kill him. No. And therefore, it would be wrong to deliver a verdict at this time. That is the prosecution's unwavering position. What? But Judge Jikoku has already confessed. Nevertheless. Eric Van Zeeks has committed crimes for which he must be punished, but not for this trial, dude! Well, would appear you have information that the court needs to hear, Prosecutor Asagi. <laughs> Certainly, the murder of Inspector Gregson was actually carried out by Seishiro Jigoku. But it's clear from the witness's testimony that he was coerced into complying with the plot. Into this sick, merciless assassin exchange. That may be true, but... So what I want to know is who coerced Jigoku? Who was pulling the strings? The victim went to France, having been ordered on a mission for the Reaper, only to be murdered. 
In other words, the mastermind behind the assassin exchange is someone in a position to give such an order. As we've already established, the Reaper himself. Well, certainly, that would appear to follow. The prosecution hereby formally accuses the man in the dock, Barak Van Zeeks, of being the Reaper of the Bailey. He's not! He's not! He's only a prosecutor! He doesn't have the power! And furthermore, I'm going to prove his guilt beyond all reasonable doubt. What? Kazuma, I love you, but you're going after the wrong dude! It's Strongheart! Order, order, order! The Reaper of the Bailey is a long-standing mystery council. All you suggest you have some new information with which to build a case. Scotland Yard has already investigated Lord Van Zeeks very thoroughly in that regard, and they found no evidence whatsoever to substantiate the claim that he is the Reaper. Perhaps, but circumstances have now changed. What do you mean? It's already been established that the Assassin's Exchange was negotiated with Jikogu by the Reaper himself, which means we now have a new line of questioning by which to identify definitively the man's identity. That is the prosecution's intention here. I must say I'm surprised by quite how, ta how tenaciously you appear to want to besmirch my name. You are guilty of an unforgivable crime, Lord Van Zeeks. And I will bring you to justice for it, whatever it takes. That explains Kazuma's silence before. He'll stop at nothing to finish what Lord Van Zeeks unwittingly started ten years ago. Very well. Whilst it's extremely irregular. I will on this occasion grant the prosecution further opportunity for witness testimony. The defendant will disclose any and all involvement he has with the Reaper and the Assassin Exchange. I thank you, my lord, for guiding the court so wisely. I hereby declare this court to be in session for a supplementary hearing. That's a separate trial? No, this is the last one. This is it. At the Pokemon extension to Twitch? What's the Pokemon extension? Pray turn a blind eye to the discourtesy as I verify that this vile and unrhythmating accusation hasn't soured the contents of my hallows, Chalice. Lord Van Zeeks! I first had to suffer the pseudonym of the Reaper ten years ago now. And ever since that time, I've endured the weight of implied guilt that's gone with it. So I welcome the chance to testify now, and crush those allegations once and for all. Good. But I let justice decide, Lord Van Zeeks. The prosecution seeks to begin building its case by calling the accused to the stand as the primary witness, in order that he may answer the accusation brought by the prosecution that he is the Reaper of the Bailey. Stop! And what says the defense? Putting the defendant in the witness stand can be extremely dangerous. And Kazuma-sama is so emotional at the moment, he's not thinking logically. You're right that he's not himself, but I knew it would be like this, and I came here today determined to face him through whatever might arise, as a lawyer and as his friends. And that's what we must do. The defense has no objection, my lord. Very well. Defendant, you will take the word to stand, and give your formal testimony on the subject of your involvement with the Reaper and the Assassin Exchange. He has none! As you wish, my lord. This is a kangaroo court if i ever seen it. If you go to your extensions, you can search for them. There's a Pokemon one where you catch Pokemon and chat. Oh, whoa. Um, uh, I'll try to figure it out for next time. I've never taken the life of another, nor have I instructed another to kill. I've been investigating the truth behind the Reaper for years, and I was aware of Gregson's involvement. That's the reason why I went to Fresno Street that day, and how I came to discover the body. The point is, no common thread exists between myself, Gregson, and Dr. Wilson. Clearly, therefore, there's no reason to suspect me of behind being behind the assassin exchange. Do you deny all accusations by the prosecution? Both that you are Reaper of the Bailey, and that you are masterminded the assassin exchange. I acknowledge that the public at large believe me to be the Reaper. However, that's a fallacy, which I alone am in a position to forswear. Naturally, the prosecution believes the testimony just given by the accused to be untrue. <laughs> Yunosuke Naruhodo. Yes? Let me ask you, why are you here? What really brings you to this courtroom? 
A desire to uncover the truth. Even if the truth proves your client to be guilty. Not guilty. From all my experiences in this courtroom, I've come to realize something. The truth can't be hidden. Sooner or later, it will come out. So it's always my intention to work with my client in pursuit of the truth. I want you to remember what you just said. Enough dilatory chatter. Counsel for the defense, proceed to cross-examine the witness. Uh, ah, yes, my lord. I know exactly what you're thinking, Kazuma. I know you're just waiting to point it out. The contradiction you're convinced lies somewhere within this man's testimony. Uh, creator dashboard. Uh, extension, search Pokemon. Extensions. Search Pokemon. Pokemon Unite, build, uh, Picolytics, Pokotwitch, uh, uh, where do I go? I lost it! Oh, Pokemon Community Game, um, Pokemon, Pokemon Community Game, uh, oh, install. Uh, configure? There's nothing to configure, just go and activate the panel. Activate the panel? Where? Where? Huh? Uh... Which I have... I didn't know all these things existed. Wow, this would make... things a lot more fun. Whoa. Yes. Dream chat. I don't know where it is. I can't find it anymore. I'm done. <laughs> Under my extensions. What? It says it's done. Activate. Set as panel one. You're replacing an active extension. I don't know what it is. Is it there? I can't tell. Did you get a new? Chair, you look really nice with it. Ha ha ha, thank you. Um, I've never taken the life of another. I've been investigating the truth behind the Reaper for years, and I was aware of Grex's involvement. That's the reason why I went to Fresno Street that day and how I came to discover the body. Point is, no common thread exists between myself, Dr. Gregson, and Dr. Wilson. Clearly, therefore, there's no reason to suspect me of being behind the extension exchange. I mean... There is a thread between you and Gregson, but not- uh, That is new panel, panel 2. Revo! I want to finish the game! Uh, um, that is a new panel. Slot, panel 2. Cool. Should be there. Um. Um. Therefore, there's no reason to suspect me of being behind the assassin exchange. Um, I knew- I mean, press this one, because it seems to give the most info. You say for years, how long exactly? Since the very first time the Reaper's influence was felt in this courtroom, ten years ago now. And your investigations led you to somehow- uh, led you somehow to Inspector Gregson, you're saying. I didn't want to believe it. It was a personal acquaintance, we'd work on cases together in the past. A friend, even. It felt like a betrayal, but I demanded permission to search his office at the yard without his knowledge. Which is when you found a secret notebook, is it? It's when I first learned of the location he noted only as Grouse in the appointment at 5pm on the 31st. Though I didn't know the significance of those details at the time. So now we're at the nub of the matter. As it turns out, the significance for me personally was very unfortunate. I explained it. Oh, hey, cyberbullying. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to be part of your cyberbullying anymore. There is a link between you and Gregson, though. Of course, we were close acquaintances. We worked on numerous cases together. I considered the man to be a mentor of sorts. He taught me a number of important lessons. He did? Such as what? Worth to buy good fish and chips and such like. 
Well, that was convincing. Dr. Wilson was a coroner, of course, but that was some time in the past. And in any case, I understand it was several years ago now that he was invited to work at a Japanese university. That's right. He was a visiting professor at the Imperial Yumei University in Tokyo. It should be unambiguously clear then that no link exists between myself and him. In other words, I had no motive for sending some assassin across the oceans to kill the man. Sounds plausible enough and I want to believe it. But something about this just doesn't look so quite right with- So there is something?! What?! Red-headed article league. That's just the redhead thing. That's Mr. Vigil, who cares? Letter of introduction, and this was the grouse. Dismissal notice, this is Daily Vigil, so it has nothing to do with him. This is Daily Vigil's wife. That's a red hair piece, that's the revolver. Policeman figure was... For... This, the pocket watch? That was a thing. This is- this shows... A link between Gregson and Barrack, which he just said now. <sighs> autopsy report. Who's autopsy? Tobias Gregson. Coroner Mar Mariah Gorey. Um, I'm seeing floor plan. That's just a floor plan. Notice board. Details of whole raft of cases. Paper from 10 years ago. Out of interest, most of the newspaper kind of here. Red-headed league. Uh, do you remember a red hair piece at the scene? That's nothing. Uh, firecrackers, a photograph. Look at this graph. Inspector's identification. I saw it multiple times. There's nothing there. Remember the photograph. Asuki papers. Shall I'll be delivered to my son, Kazuma Asagi. That my fate in this foreign lands. We got nothing about my chosen path. Gregson's trunk. Open it. Oh wait, but this up. Uh, no, why am I looking at Gregson's trunk when I should be? Uh, passport. Look at this graph. Every time, and it makes me laugh. Passport. Gregson with one person, which is for which one person? Clint's autopsy report. <gasps> autopsy report! Coroner John H. Wilson, victim Clint. Um, 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 credit to Inspector Gregson for petitioning so doggedly for the autopsy procedure. It's not. It's not the statement. Oh, the point is there's no. Wait, but then what does this prove? What does this prove? Oh no. Ah, jelly arm toast. <laughs> what is this? An autopsy report. Wait, it's ten years old. From the autopsy of Lord Clint Van Zeeks. What? My brother's autopsy report. I'm pleased to see the defense hasn't in turn to run from the undeniable truth. But what does this prove? This still- Oh, this shows a motive that- he... But- Order in the court. What reason do you have for presenting a 10-year-old autopsy report to your counsel? This, the autopsy report of Professor's final victim, is an ind indelible link between Inspector Gregson, Dr. Wilson, and the defendants. Not that accursed name again. The Professor. I've personally researched all of the court records, court records relating to that case. I know that at the time, autopsy was considered sacrilege to the victim's souls. And for a member of the aristocracy like Lord Clint Van Zeeks, it was unthinkable. But someone implored the powers that be to allow the autopsy to go ahead, Inspector Gregson. He declared that he was certain he would obtain conclusive proof from the procedure. And it was Dr. Wilson who con conducted the autopsy. His signature is clearly visible on the documents. As promised by Gregson, the autopsy did indeed produce evidence. Evidence that conclusively proved Gens Shinasuki was guilty of the murders. In my brother's dying moments, he mustered all his remaining strength to leave that vital clue behind. Indeed, that was the key to indicting the professor for his crimes and the conclusive evidence that convicted him. 
It enabled Lord Van Zeex here to avenge his brother's senseless death with a marvelous victory in court. A marvelous victory, was it? I wonder if that's really true. What? Could the same be said if it turned out that the key piece of evidence in question was in fact fabricated? If the inspector, the coroner, and the prosecutor all colluded together to cast an innocent Japanese man as a mass murderer and send him to his death. That's outrageous. And now, ten years later, for some reason the secret has been threatened and needs protecting. Which is why the inspector and the coroner had to be silenced, isn't it? By someone in power in Japan and in Britain, using the two killers recruited for the assassin exchange. Barrick doesn't have power in Japan! All at once! Ten years ago, my father was convicted in this very courtroom as a mass murderer to be sentenced to death. But it was all a sham, and I swore to myself that I'd prove it. Which is why I had to come to Britain, whatever the cost. You'll have to forgive me if I feel compelled to toast this vengeful Nipponese's tenacity of purpose here. However... He who fails to quash his emotions in the courtroom has failed as a lawyer. Come on, Kazuma, you know this won't wash. You're claiming your father was misrepresented in a trial that took place a whole decade ago. You must see that without evidence, that's nothing more than a wild accusation. As it happens, I have evidence. What? As the court has heard, I crossed the channel to France with Gregson on the 31st. I went with him on the pretext of being the assassin recruited to kill Seishiro Jigoku, but my true intentions were to make the inspector tell me the truth. What truth? The truth about the evidence, and he acknowledged what I've already deduced. There's a closely guarded secret about what went on in the autopsy ten years ago. What? A secret? I know nothing of any secrets. While we waited for my supposed mark in Jigoku's cabin, I drew my clan's illustrious sword, Kaduma, before the inspector's eyes. He very quickly understood what my true motive was. Right, I see. You're that Alsogi's young lad, are you? And what? You're gonna cut me down with that thing, is that it? That will very much depend on the answers you give to my questions. I want to know what really happened ten years ago. The truth. That's all. Before we get into it, let me make one thing clear. I still believe your father was a professor. There's no doubt in my mind. But unfortunately, back then, we didn't have the evidence we needed to make the crime stick. So, you admitted then? The evidence used in my father's trial was fabricated? It was for the good of the country! Anyway, I was just following orders. Orders? What exactly did you do? Speak. I'm not saying another word. Even if your life depends on it. That's right. Even then. So that's when the tip of the sword broke. Oh, Kazuma-sama. The results of Clint Van Zeek's autopsy were fabricated. And the investigating officer, Gregson, and the lead coroner, Wilson, must have known about it. And they can only have been ordered to pervert the court of justice in that way by one man. The man leading the case for the prosecution, Barrack Van Zeeks. <gasps> and that's why his name is on the lists. I still don't... No. Here's also why I don't think it's Barrack. On that list of four people, Kazuma, Asashin, Gregson, Wilson. Gregson and Wilson, we see, were involved in the professor case. I don't know how Asashin is involved, other than she's an assassin that was sent to kill the Marks. Kazuma, I don't know why. But Barrick's name is not there. And if he was involved in this somehow, they would have to off him too. Because they're like, well, we gotta get rid of everyone on the professor case. So if his name isn't on the list, then that would presume... That would mean, presumably, that he is the Reaper. But... But... He was just a brand new prosecutor. He just came out of law school. I don't think he... Yeah, his family's nobility, but I don't th think he had the connections and the means to make a whole network of people yet. I don't think it's... Barak is not the Reaper. 
Strong Heart is somehow the mastermind of this, and I don't know how yet. I don't know what his part was in everything. I really think it's Strong Heart. I just have to prove it. In other words, the defendant did have calls to organize this exchange of assassins. Exactly. And as was established earlier, it has to it has to have been the Reaper himself who liaised with Jigoku in Japan to arrange the exchange. Ah. So it follows that the Reaper's true identity can only be that of the man who stands accused in this courtroom today, Barak Van Zeeks. I don't think so. I don't think yeah. so. Kazuma Asogi. What? Well, you've just told the court. Are you absolutely certain of your facts? Did Gregson really fabricate evidence for that trial ten years ago? I heard it with my own ears. His shameful admission. In that case, I know. The name of the Reaper. What? Lord Van Zeeks? I gave no such orders. I know that for certain. Which narrows down the remaining possibilities to one. If Lord Van Zeeks isn't the one behind all this, then yes, there's only one other person who could have done something like that. I believe I know who it is too. You? I just had a feeling this name was going to come up. The true identity of the infinite I mean, it's the person I've been saying it is all along. The only person who could have arranged the assassin exchange and manipulated the autopsy results. It, it is- I was just like, how do I prove that Strongheart was involved in this? Freaking Courtney Scythe! She's- she's been blackmailed by Strongheart. She was Wilson's assistant. Yeah, that's how he was involved. Fracking! Ah! If he was the man behind it, why would he frame himself? Yeah, yeah I got it. Freaking Strongheart! What? Lord Stronghearts? Yes, it's true that 10 years ago the defendant handled the prosecution of the professor in court. But he only took over the case after his brother, Lord Clint Van Zeeks, had been killed. Because he was the original prosecutor! I can only assume that this is the most inappropriate joke in British judicial history. Well, Lord Van Zeeks? 10 years ago, I was very new to my profession. But I had a burning desire to avenge my brother's death, so I pleaded for control of the case. The investigation to that point. The supplication of the Lord to allow my brother's corpse to be examined. All the evidence I was given, the autopsy reports, it all came from you. I've spent my life since then believing I was in your debt for the way you stood aside and let me handle the trial. But I see now. I was very much mistaken. It was a hugely influential force that caused the inspector and the coroner to break the law 10 years ago. And that same force was still felt a decade later on the other side of the world by Seishiro Jikoku. Lord Strongheart, ha- Wait, but Jikoku was only on the stand to defend Genshin and be like, Yo, he didn't do it. And he only got like, he only got a strike against his record because he destroyed the pulpit. Like he did now. So what would Strongheart have over him? Huh? Everything falls into place when we recognize that you are the Reaper of the Bailey. The court awaits your response, my lord. This may very well go down in British judicial history, but I assure you, it is no joke. Consider this a formal accusal by the defense. It doesn't warrant a response. A formal accuser? Don't be absurd. The defense's claims are utter nonsense, a wild fantasy at best. You're not going to defend yourself? You claim there was some wrongdoing with Lord Clint Van Zeeck's autopsy. That's utterly untrue. But I heard it from Gregson's own lips. He admitted to it. And where's your evidence? What? Gregson's dead now, unless you were thinking of summoning a ghost to the stand. You mean to say... I forget how the system works in your little backwater country, but in the course of British Empire, without evidence there is no case. 
I have no intention of entertaining some wild fantasy that can't be pos can't possibly be sustained without by anyone or anything. Ah. Uh. Three good-looking guys going up against this douchebag. Nice. Or end court. One would expect a Gretchen's murder and in light of Dr. Wilson's death as well. There's really no one left who could testify about the events of ten years ago, is there? But that was the real purpose of the assassin exchange. This court has no business raking over the coals of a case that was concluded a decade ago. The accuser brought by the prosecution and the defense is categorically denied. I take it there are no objections. Kazuma. He's more or less waited his lo whole life for this moment. Is there really nothing else we can do now? Is there no other avenue we can go down in pursuit of the truth about what happened all those years ago? If only there was someone who could testify about Clint Van Zeek's obstacy. Courtney Scythe? <gasps> Me- Uh, Susato's dead! He's gone to extraordinary lives to cover his tracks, even so far as dispatching an assassin all the way to Japan to ensure Dr. Wilson's silence. And Dr. Scythe won't say anything about against Strongheart. But, there's still one ray of hope. <laughs> Actually, there is one person. One person who can still testify about that autopsy. Don't be ridiculous. There's no one left. Who do you know, Who? Tell me. Kazuma, I... Please, this trial can't end. Not yet. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing it for the truth. But I'm really doing it for you. <laughs> so you can find out the truth. But the person defense would like to call... Boom! Boom jams! Heaven help us. Another Japanese. Racist! An expert in forensic medicine, my lord. Professor Yuji Mikotoba. 16 years ago, he came to London with Seishiro Jikoku and Genshin Asogi as a visiting student. And what could his testimony possibly tell us? Professor Mikotoba was the primary assistant during the autopsy in question! He was also the person who actually penned the reports. Incorrect. The autopsy was carried out by the coroner, Dr. Wilson. The report carries his signature. It was the primary assistant's duty to keep a written record of the coroner's work during the procedure. In actual fact, the coroner merely read over the report at the end and signed it. In other words, Professor Mikotoba witnessed the entire autopsy from start to finish. The defense demands that Professor Mikotoba be summoned as a witness at a matter of urgency. Whatever really happened in the autopsy laboratory 10 years ago is something only he can tell us. The defense's demand is denied BECAUSE YOU KNOW YOU'RE GUILTY! What? But Professor Mikotoba is in London at this very moment. We could summon him to stand in minutes. No, of course he's not going to agree to it. Strongheart has no intention of summoning anyone who knows. He's too concerned about protecting himself. Prosecutor Asogi, let me refresh your memory as you seem to have forgotten the prosecution's stance. Only minutes ago, you accused the defendant of being the Reaper and of masterminding the assassin exchange. I did, yes. So present your evidence for those claims and make your case complete. I... I... At this time, I don't have the requisite evidence, but that's exactly why we need witness testimony. The professor case is closed. There are no clues in the distant past that will bolster your argument today. I'm afraid to say, Prosecutor Asogi, that you would appear to be possessed by the spirit of your late homicidal father! Oh, I am going to take you down. Just stab him in the chest! Now, as I stated earlier, this court has already reached a conclusion with respect to the matter at hand. Inspector Gregson was murdered by Japanese Supreme Court Judge Seishiro Jigoku. As for any hidden circumstances that may exist, they will be investigated in due course by the proper authorities. But we all know what will happen! That'll just give the mastermind of the whole venture time to cover his tracks again. Why would you mean me? Yes! Your punishment for this contemptible behavior will be decided at a later date. As for you, Prosecutor Asuki, you will be remanded following these proceedings. Willingly, I trust, since you gave your word. Ah. This futile game of revenge is over, young Master Asuki. It's not! It's not! It can't be that game. Ah! Kazuma, no! Whoa. He is so close to finding the truth! That will be all- No, see, he can't- He can't be the judge if he is the one found guilty! Jelly Toasty Toes, we're like Je Jelly Kazuma fangirl. Heck yeah, what, Jones? 
Mr. Sholmes! This is no place for amateur detection, Mr. Sholmes. May I remind you that these proceedings are closed to the general public. You will leave the courtroom at once. <laughs> Mr. Sholmes was instrumental in the apprehension of Seishiro Jigoku before he fled from Europe. The court should hear what he has to say. Lord Mayor Strongheart, it's imperative that you refrain from bringing this trial to an end at this stage. Is it really? And why would that be? You need only recall your own words from the opening of the trial to answer that question, if I may. We will stop at nothing to uncover the whole truth behind these disturbing findings. Surely it can't be. That the shock of being accused be- That the shock of being accused of being the Reaper yourself has erased that from your memory, can it? The whole truth, sir, has already been uncovered. It would seem that we have a great many important members of the judiciary present here today. I put it to you, my dear fellows, should the trial end at this juncture? After all, why have you been invited to attend? To nod along to the prevarications of your superiors? He's mad, look at that gable. <laughs> oh, does his gavel like change eyebrow shape? Order! Order in the court! It seems to be that we stand before a door that leads to a new era of legal practices, a door that it is jar. Let us emerge from the shadows of the Reaper's decade-long ascendancy. For you and you alone, my dear fellows, have the power to push this door open now. The auditors in the gallery have no rights to express an opinion on court proceedings. Silence! He's right. The judge has absolute authority here. Yes, if he calls the trial end, it must end. But will that really do? I sense dark things screaming from behind the scenes. Dark thing. Is there a single person here, a person who can always say he doesn't sense the same? What? What? Trial should go down. Summon a witness. That's right. We need to clear this up before that young Japanese can be found anywhere. Cosmo, you're so beautiful. My lord, you are sure those person that you would have come to troll truth there. Vindicate yourself as an island that is a person. Treat the whole truth and nothing but the truth. That's the very foundation of British law. A toast to my dependable colleagues in the gallery. On with the trial! On with the trial! Testify! 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 Well, my lord, you hear the voice of the British justice, I take it. I think you'll find it will be rather awkward to silence. Van Zeke's redemption. For real. The court will recess briefly. And you're gonna run away? I have no intention of shirking from these allegations. Then we need a real judge back. Bailiff, arrange for the subpoena of the witness at once. As soon as the gentleman arrives at the courthouse, we shall reconvene. A recess won't be necessary, my lord. Oh wait, we're still going! Pardon? Mikotobe is a close friend of mine. He accompanied me today and is waiting in the antechamber as we speak. I do believe he's been enjoying a little trip down memory lane, in fact. What? Professor Mikotopa is here in the courthouse? Mr. Sholmes, you... You didn't know this would happen, did you? My dear fellow, no one is in a better position to answer that question than you, surely. I wasn't just asking for the fun of it, you know. Well, I must thank you for your assistance in this matter, Mr. Sholmes. However, you are of no further use here. Kindly leave the courtroom at once. But of course, in truth, I find myself rather busy now as a result of these developments. Mr. Nadahodo. Ah, yes? I trust you have Iris's little lucky charm with you. Absolutely. It's still in my pocket. She sends her regards, and a reminder. If you find yourself at a dead end, the ears are at your disposal. Just one tug, if you please. Oh, um, of course. In that case, the trial will continue without delay. Bailiff, show the witness to the stand. So it's Lord Strongheart. He's the Reaper of the Bailey. Where exactly is the triangle going to take me, I wonder? Just how deep am I supposed to be plunged into the back of the abyss? Well, I'm ready. I'm ready to head into the heart of this maelstrom and confront whatever horrors it tries to drown me under. Have we continued? Save current progress! Trial part three. Ooh. Ooh.
Okay, I would love to finish this, but it's already been two hours, and I feel like if we continue, it's gonna be like another two hours, and that's gonna make me stop at midnight, and I can't do that. I'm getting tired. But, oh man, I definitely gotta stream tomorrow, because I gotta finish it. I'm gonna finish the game tomorrow, guys! Woo! It's gonna happen! A recess so he can take him out? No, see, it wouldn't have been good to take a recess because Strongheart would have just, I feel like he would have just run away. Uh, tomorrow's stream, we're gonna finally finish Great Ace Attorney! Woo woo! And then I'll have to do um, an art stream for, um, to get ready for Nirvana Initiative and so I could hook up my PS4 to all of my capture card stuff. Finish today? No! It's already like 9.48 and it's gonna be, I feel like it's gonna be another two and a half because don't forget, we have the trial, trial to go through. And all of the ending cutscenes and dialogue. It's gonna be over three hours. I'm gonna finish tomorrow. But yeah, I can't wait. We're gonna finish it. We're at the end. Yes! So, I will lend you my Nirvana initiative so you can play it on your PS4 to save you money. But rip. Oh no, I already have it here. Ugh. See? That right here. Teen Spirit? Uh, Nirvana Initiative. AI Somnium Files. But yeah, we're gonna finish tomorrow! We're, we're doing this! Okay. Man, I'm so like, hype. I'm so like, excited and energetic because my adrenaline is just rushing. Because we're gonna finally figure out how the freak Strongheart is involved in all of this and what the freak he did and why they framed Genshin, how he came to be framed. I cannot wait. But yeah, that's it for me tonight. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night. Bye-bye.